I don't know if you remember, for those of you that, uh, that are obviously old enough, um, Mel Gibson brought out a movie called The Passion of the Christ. And, um, and it, obviously it went viral. It was a, a phenomenal film. And it was all based on the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And um, uh, it, was, it was just really on about a 13-hour period of Jesus' life. It is a phenomenal uh, movie. It took me quite a while to come round to actually watching it um, because of uh, how um, gory it is. There's no doubt about it, I think, from a Christian perspective. It really enables you to appreciate the suffering that Jesus went through uh, leading to the cross and on the cross. It is well worth watching if you're over the age of 60. Okay, <laughs> um, but, it's, uh, but, but it was a, a powerful that one that came. And so on the basis of that, the big question is, is why did Jesus have to die? That is actually probably one of the most important questions that we can have in all of history. Why did Jesus have to die? Well, today, I want to give you Christianity in a nutshell. Yes, I'm going to kind of try so that by the end of today, maybe by morning, uh, some of you got work in the morning, so I'll try to be a bit shorter. But, um, but seriously, I, my aim is, is so that you will know what Christianity is about, what the life and death and the resurrection of Jesus is about. Because Christianity is important for a number of reasons, and I want to look at those. In fact, I was reading a book the other day by John Piper that has 50 reasons. Now, you might be glad I'm not going to go through all 50, okay? I'm going to go through probably about uh, seven if time allows. But it's important to understand why billions of people believe in Jesus Christ, that follow Jesus Christ, why millions of people have actually given their life for the cause of Jesus Christ. Because they have said, I will follow him and I will not deny my faith. And, uh, and, if, and if you're um, aware of some of the things, like some of the people that have, uh, that have been baptized this morning, uh, and in Iran, and in, uh, in um, Afghanistan, uh, I was reading some in Nigeria, uh, some of the people and the way that they are suffering because they believe in Jesus Christ. If you want to know why, there are tens of thousands of churches all over the British Isles, then, uh, and you want to know why this is the most important to know in life, then I ask you just to lean in and to listen to some of the things that I want to share today. Because the story of Jesus didn't end at the cross. It didn't end at the cross. And so on Easter Sunday, we celebrate that he rose from the dead. And so the first point I want to look at is, is Jesus died and rose again to prove that he was the Son of God. That is the first aspect that I want to, to bring out. The Bible says in Romans chapter 1, And Jesus Christ, our Lord, was shown to be the Son of God, when God powerfully raised him from the dead by means of the Holy Spirit. You see, Jesus never claimed to just be a teacher or to be a prophet or to be a, a good moral uh, teacher. Uh, he claimed to be the Son of God. So, in other words, he claimed something that was far more than anything that anybody else um, might want to claim uh, for him. And he claimed this many, many times. And in fact, that is the reason that he was put to death on the cross, because of he said who he, he because of who he said he was. Now, of course, there have probably been thousands of people throughout the world, uh, certainly of history, who have said that they were God, or said uh, uh, we know some people say that they were Jesus Christ, but they've claimed to it. The difference between Jesus and every other person is that Jesus proved it. You see, Jesus proved it when he said, this is what's going to happen. I am going to die, and I'm going to be dead for three days, and on the third day, I'm going to rise again. 
Now, I don't know about you, but if somebody said that to me and then they pulled it off, I would listen to what they have to say, would you not? And so this is what he did. He came back to life. Acts chapter 1 says, During the 40 days after his crucifixion, he appeared to the apostles from time to time, and he proved to them in many ways that he was actually alive. In other words, he went around Jerusalem talking with people, eating with people. Um, He went fishing one time. Uh, He even met uh, over 500 people at another time. And so it was, it's important to understand that he proved himself to be alive after the crucifixion. And we know that the Romans would have done everything that they could to have proved that he was still dead, but they couldn't find the body because he was raised from the dead. Now, many people don't realize that uh, that crucifixion was a common punishment in the Roman Empire. Um, It lasted for about 800 years, and they crucified about 600,000 people during that time, but only one of them came back to life again. And that's the reason why we follow Jesus. The second reason is is he came and he died and he rose again to pay for our sins. You see, the critics of Mel Gibson's film, they criticized him because they said, why have you concentrated all your time on just the latter end of Jesus' life, on the last, say, 13 hours of when it was his death and his resurrection? Well, the answer to that is because that's the part that matters. Because that's the part that makes a difference to you and to me. You see, if Jesus had just lived and he had just taught and then he had died and not risen from the dead, then we wouldn't be where we are now. We wouldn't have what we have today and what we profess to have with Jesus Christ. It's the resurrection from the dead that saves us. And that's why we are so important to us. It's not the life of Jesus. It's not the teachings of Jesus. It is the fact that he rose from the dead. He died for our sins. He paid for the price on the cross. His death paid for the price. But his resurrection means that we can have it. We can appreciate it. We can rise with him. You see, when he paid for our sins, the simple thing is, is for every single one of us, we have blown it at some point or other. We've all made mistakes. We've all done things that we shouldn't have done. We've said things that we shouldn't have said. We've been places where we know we shouldn't have been. And so in the midst of all that, we understand that we have blown it. We have not met God's standard. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't even meet my own standard. Never mind God's standard for it. And so we need to understand that if you do the crime, you pay the time. Okay, if you go speeding, you get us fined, don't you? Oh, a speed awareness cause. <laughs> okay, but in other words, if you break God's law, you pay God's penalty. And the penalty for sin, the Bible says, is the wages of sin is death. Absolutely. So somebody has to pay for the things in our life that we have done wrong. Amen. Somebody has to do it. Now, either you pay for it yourself or someone else has to pay for it for you. So that is a big question for us. But what God said to us, and this is what we think of at Easter, this is why we celebrate Easter so importantly to us, because God says, I'll pay the price. God said to us because of his love for us, said, I'll pay the price. And so he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to earth, so that he would live and he would show the miracles and the marvelous way of living life. And then he died and he rose again so that you and I could know what it is to have someone pay for our sins, for the things that we have done wrong. That's the good news. The good news is that everything that you have done wrong and everything that you are going to do wrong, even the things you don't have planned to do wrong that we're going to do in the future, they have been paid for. That's marvelous, isn't it? It doesn't mean just my past is forgiven, but God gives me forgiveness in the day. He gives us power to live on in each day. The Bible says this, he is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son, 
and forgave our sins. He died on the cross to show us how much it means that, that our sin needs to be forgiven. There is a cost to our <coughs> excuse me, sin. He gave his blood. He gave his life so that you and I could know that forgiveness. You see, grace is free. Forgiveness is free. But it's certainly not cheap because it cost Jesus his life. And so I believe that it's important for you to know that today you are priceless. The third point is Jesus died and rose again from uh, the dead to make us acceptable to God. The Bible says in Romans chapter 4, God gave Jesus to die for our sins and he raised him to life so that we would be made acceptable to God. I don't know about you, but I found that for most people, they don't actually like themselves. They often don't feel accepted. We often want to change the way we look or the way we feel. Uh, we try to change ourselves in some way we might not like the way we, we, we uh, you know, our intelligence. You might think, I wish I was more intelligent. I wish I was more wise. I wish I had that skill. I wish I had that ability. I wish I could do this whatever it might be. And so often we wish that we were different to what we are, that we look different, that we acted different. And we can so often spend our life trying to be accepted. But the most important thing in life is not to be accepted by the people around us, but to be accepted by God. That is the crucial question in our life, is does God accept us? You see, the problem is, is God is perfect, and so he can't let imperfect people into heaven. Because if he did, it would no longer be perfect again, would it? That's, that's the issue. So God had to come up with a plan so that, that, that we who are imperfect could be made perfect, and the way he did that was, was through his son, Jesus Christ. And it's what is often called the great exchange. The Bible says this, God took the sinless Christ and poured into him our sin. Then in exchange, he poured God's goodness into us. Now that's an amazing deal, isn't it? That, that he takes our sin and he pours into us his righteousness, his goodness, uh, and we are able to know that. And so that's what God does. Now God is doing that all the time. When you look at nature, you see God doing that all the time. So, for example, the plants and the trees and the, the, that you see around us, they are doing this great exchange all the time. You see, the plants take what would kill us, yes, the carbon uh, dioxide, the CO2, and they transform it into oxygen that you and I need to live. And so it's an exchange, isn't it? They take what would kill us, and give us back that which gives us to life. And Jesus does the same thing in a spiritual sense. He takes that which will kill us, our sin, and he gives us eternal life. He gives us life so that we can be good enough to go to heaven. Amen? So we're never going to be good enough of ourselves, but, so, but when we accept him, we know that we can be his. The Bible says this, God says he will accept us and acquit us, declare us not guilty if we trust Jesus Christ to take away our sins. And we can all be saved in this same way by coming to Christ, no matter who we are or what we've been like. We can all be saved. The problem is, so often, is we try to do it the wrong way. We think that we can, by doing good things, we think if I'm just good enough or I do more good than I do bad, the, the balance will be and I'll get in because I'm good enough. But that's not the way God works at all. And so we get it backwards. So it's a little bit like um, having an electric screwdriver. I have an electric screwdriver at home and you can do a little switch and if you do it to the left, it goes one way and if you do it to the right, it goes the other way. Now, 
If you're wanting to screw a screw in, yes, and you press it in the left way, in other words, it goes in reverse, it doesn't matter what you do, the screw is not going to go in. It's not going to work. And that's the same with us, with our relationship with Jesus, with salvation, is that if we keep doing it the wrong way, if we keep trying to do reverse the order of things and don't realize that actually it's all by God's grace, it's what he's done for us, then what happens is we start busy trying to work for it. And that's, that's so important that we don't get that wrong. Fourthly, is Jesus died and rose to release us from the judgment. There's a judgment coming. The Bible tells us that we, every one of us, will have to stand before God and give an account of our life. Give an account of the things that we've had and how we've used it. Uh, give an account of how we have responded to his son, Jesus Christ. They're the two big themes in scripture, our salvation and stewardship. What have we done with what God gave us and what have we done with God's son are the two massive things. Now, I know for, um, <coughs> for, for some uh, people, they maybe uh, think that when you go to heaven that we're going to have a big screen. And uh, in this big screen, there's going to be um, a showing of your life. Can you imagine that? There's an, um, can you imagine for a moment there's a, there's a film on Jonathan's life? Everything he's ever said, everything he's ever done, and everything he's ever thought. Whoa. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want a private showing, never mind a public one. But you know what? God says, all this of all your life, I don't bring it up for anybody else. I wipe it clean. It is gone. It's gone, gone, gone. And so this is what I'm so, instead of coming to the judgment, and there is going to be a judgment, there's going to be a judgment. Now, to avoid judgment, you have to believe in him. That's what the Bible says. Those who believe in him will not be judged. That's important to understand, isn't it? That we that we grasp that. Now, there are two judgments in, in heaven. There's going to be the great white throne, which if you give your life to Jesus, believe him, follow him, then you are going to avoid that judgment. But what you will have, you will go before Jesus Christ, what's often referred to as the beamer seat of Christ, and you will receive rewards. I don't know about you, but I'd rather go from judgment to the reward throne, would you not? And that's the difference when we give our lives to Jesus, he just wipes the, the slate clean. There is no condemnation to those who belong to Jesus Christ. Fifthly, Jesus died and rose to show us God's purpose for our lives. The Bible says Christ died so that all who live, having received eternal life from him, might live no longer for themselves but spend their lives pleasing God. In other words, we're not made to live for ourselves. We're not made to live for things that, things that are about us. And it's amazing how many times that we talk to people and we, you, know, you know in your own experience that people are so caught up in their little world in how things affect them. And yet once we come to Christ, we realize there's a bigger purpose, far bigger than any individual, that we are able to, to pursue when we understand that God has a plan and a purpose for every one of our lives. We were made by God and we were made for him. We were not put on earth to live a selfish life. We were here more than just to fulfill our own pleasures, our own wants, our own desires, our own goals. And I believe it's a fundamental question in life for every one of us to ask, what on earth am I here for? Why am I here? Why do I exist? Because God has a plan. And when you discover God's purpose for your life, you will never be the same again. The Bible says this, Jesus included everyone in his death, so everyone could be included in his life, a resurrection life, a far better life than people lived on their own. The problem with the good life is it's not good enough. <laughs> And so we just become spiritually empty when that's all that we pursue. And so there's lots of things that we often pursue, money and, uh, and, and pleasures and, and things, but we, we miss life. Our life is empty when we don't understand the purpose for which 
we were created. It's not the good life we need, it's a new life that we need, that God offers to us. And let me just say to you parents, if you want your kids to live the better life, the, su the supreme life, the better life for them, rather than just the good life, I, I, I ask you, bring your children up to know the Lord Jesus Christ and to know their purpose in life, to know the, the purposes of God for their life. It's not what your purpose is, not what they think their purpose is, not what their teacher thinks their purpose is, but what does God say their purpose in life is? Sixthly, Jesus died and rose because he wants to give us eternal life. The Bible says in Romans, when people sin, they earn what sin pays, which is death. But God gives us a free gift, life forever in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now let me ask you a question, do you like to get gifts? I certainly do, I like to get gifts. But can you imagine that somebody offers you a gift, but you never receive it, you never take hold of it, you never open it, you never use it, you don't, you don't, whatever that gift is, it is only when you receive it that it has any value, isn't it? If you came to me this morning with an Easter egg, there's hoping. If you came to me with an Easter egg and all I did was just to put it on the floor and never touched it at all, you would think, well, it was a bit pointless giving you that egg, wouldn't you? It's never going to, never going to be received. And so we've got to receive eternal life. We've got to receive Jesus into our life. We've got to know that it is important to us. Romans 6 says this, when Jesus was raised from the dead... It was a signal. What was it? A signal of the end of death as the end. Never again will death have the last word. In other words, one day, no more funerals. One day, no more grief. So the question is, when the Bible talks about a signal, the resurrection of Jesus being a signal, what is a signal? Well, it's something that gets your attention. So let me just say to this, in other words, some people just do not recognize signals, do they? Yeah. In other words, they are a couple of fries short of a Big Mac meal. They are, the light's on, but nobody's in, as it were. In other words, it's like, for you guys, you know what it's like when you're out and your wife is signaling to you and you don't get it. Until you get home, and then you get in. <laughs> so, guys, I'm just saying this morning, God is giving you a signal. He is trying to get your attention. He is trying to say to you, look at what I've done. Look at what the offer. And some people say, I've heard people say, well, you know, if God gave me a sign, gave you a sign, what more does he need to give you? than the resurrected saviour of the world. What bigger thing can he do than do that? I want to say to you, it is so important that we understand that the resurrection, it split history, BC and AD, all because of the cross of Jesus Christ. Every time we write the date, we recognize the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. He makes a difference, and the only difference to you and I is, will you receive it? Will you accept it? Will you say yes to that gift of eternal life? It is so important for us that we say, yes, God, I want to live eternally with you. And seventhly, and lastly, so I last. Yeah, I'm sure some of you get that. Jesus died and rose to show us his amazing love for us. Now, I've left this to last for the simple reason. This is the reason for all the other reasons. It's because he loved us, because he is so passionate about us, that he did what he did. It is because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. When you love someone, you give. You give and you give. You don't think of it as an expense. You don't think of it as a cost. You think of it, what a privilege to be able to give. And so that's what God did for us. He didn't just say, I love you. He showed it by the death on the cross. God showed his great love for us, Romans says, 
by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. What I found so often, though, is we try to get things, we try to get our life clean first before giving our life to Jesus. Think, well, when, if I sort this out, and sort that, it's a little bit like, you know, you're going to the dentist so you brush your teeth because you don't want the dentist to think you've got, you know, food between your teeth. The rest of the time, you're maybe not bothered, but that time, one day, you're, oh, for example, you've got the cleaner coming around to your house. And so what does the wife do? Clean, clean, clean. Because you don't want the cleaner to think. <laughs> Why do we wash the dishes before we put them in the dishwasher? <coughs> we often think we've got to clean our act up. But God says, come as you are. And so we sing today that the death and resurrection of Jesus was to prove he was the son of God, to pay for our sins, to make us acceptable to God, to release us from judgment, to show us God's purpose for our life, to give us eternal life and to show us how much he loves us. My question today is, what will you do now? What will you do now knowing what the cross of Jesus is all about? And I want you today to respond to that. Now, you may respond and say, I don't want anything to do with that. You may respond and say, well, I'd like to know more. I'm, I'm interested and I'll sense that there's, there's truth in that. I'll sense that. Well, we have an Alpha course starting in a few weeks. Uh, just put it on. We have a Connect card uh, in, the, uh, in the container in the, in the front of the seat. And uh, just take the Connect card out. Put your name on it and, uh, and just put it on. I'd love to go on an Alpha um, course. That would, that would be brilliant. Uh, but maybe today you're saying... I like what I've heard. It resonates with me. I want what you're talking about. Then today, you put on your card, put today, I want to follow Jesus. I want to follow Jesus the same as those that have been baptized today. I want to have eternal life. I don't want to stand in judgment. I want to know the love of God. And if you're in that that place today, you just put that on the card and let someone know afterwards. We've got a connect point at the back there. Just say to them, I made my decision today. Or let somebody that you've come with, let them know and just say, today I made a decision to follow Jesus Christ. I promise you, you will never regret that decision.